Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a little bit of blue, red, and white. And let's come right about here and drop in a beautiful little sky. Now today in our painting, I think we want to do a beautiful soft sky. Something with some large rolling clouds. But we do need a, just a gentle blue background to start off with. And I like that little touch of red in there because it almost gives it a, a soft purple cast. It looks a little hazy and I like that. I think that's kind of kind of interesting. Now with our filbert brush and a little bit of red and yellow and white. Well let's just start right in here and drop in some, some large beautiful little clouds. And maybe it kind of comes around. You just keep doing these little circles and creating the basic top, top shape of the cloud. See, I'm setting the brush down and scrubbing it. There's very little paint here on the canvas. Like always, we don't want to use too much paint. <laughs> little problems start to happen. All right, look at that. See how I'm kind of outlining the, the blue sky there? It really makes things stand out. And maybe a little more. Let's do another cloud right here. Now with the filbert brush, we can add in some beautiful shadow areas to these clouds. The light's coming across like this. So you want to shade the left hand side. See that can just create beautiful, beautiful depth and contrast in here. This is just the same color we used up there in the blue. The difference is I, I put just a tiny touch of black into the color to, to make it sort of gray. Other than that, it's just about the same thing. Next, I'll load up the filbert brush with some blue, black, touch of red, maybe some brown and white. Oh, we got all sorts of colors in here. But what we end up with is a beautiful, soft, kind of a gray color. Gray with a little hint of blue in it. I'm just going to sketch in a, a nice little rolling foothill or mountain back here. And then scrub it in. Maybe we want, while we're in the sketching mode, we'll sort of sketch one in over here, maybe. I don't know. Now with our filbert brush and some blue, black, brown, and white. I think right in this area, I want to have a few trees. So we'll just set the brush down and start scrubbing. Now, in our painting today, we're going to have a lot of, maybe a lot of birch trees, but I also want evergreens sprinkled in. So that's what we're going to work on. All right, just sort of scrub this in here and there. Maybe right in through here, we want just a, just a, a couple more evergreens, sort of. There we go. And as you can see, I've done a, a bit of a sketch right down here. I've got actually a double waterfall, one coming from this way and one coming from that way. And we've got a little rock kind of dividing the two. I think that's interesting. It's going to be covered with evergreens and birch trees. There we go. And we're going to come up and do a little more work there to the mountain in just a second. Next, I'll tap a filbert brush right through some yellow, touch of red and white. And with this, we're going to just add on a few gentle little highlights. Nothing too crazy. We don't need, we don't need to cover up the whole mountain. The light's coming across like this, kind of from the, the top. And striking the right hand side mostly. There. Be very, very subtle here. You don't want to, don't want to have a color that stands out too much. Because if you put a color like pure yellow or pure orange, what, what's going to happen is it's going to come way too close. It's going to look, going to look like it's right in front of you. This is simply too far away for that. There we go. You can shape your mountain and create all sorts of ridges and valleys just by outlining the little tree-lined areas. Next, with our filbert brush and some black and brown. Let's go ahead and just block in some of these rocks down here. Now remember, these are waterfalls. And then there's a lot of rocks and boulders around the waterfalls. It's what kind of holds them back and, and really makes this 
painting have a lot of contrast and, and interest. Maybe on this side there's sort of some rounded rocks. and You can do rounded rocks or it'll drop off cliff style rocks. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> or have both. Both are nice too. All right, just, just start throwing them in here and there. This really helps to kind of get our painting even more mapped in. Now let's begin to work forward here in this painting. I just have the, the filbert brush and a little bit of black, green, and brown. I'm shaping a couple of these beautiful little evergreen trees up here. Now I'm, I'm not really tapping like we normally do. I'm kind of swishing the brush like this. The reason I'm doing that is because I really want more of a soft effect. There. These evergreens are actually not really the main focus of this painting. The little birch trees that we're going to put in around them. The, we're going to have some beautiful fall colors on those trees. And oh, that'll be kind of, that'll be the impact part of the painting. That and the waterfalls. I think, I think it'll be a nice little interesting concept. So we'll just, just for now, throw in a few of these evergreens. Now we'll load up the filbert brush with a little bit of brown and black then draw it evenly on both sides. That brings it to a beautiful little sharp chiseled edge. And right here, we're gonna start working on this wonderful birch forest that I keep talking about. The birch trees here, they're gonna be so pretty. Nice fall time colors. I've been, I've been wanting to do a, a painting with birch trees in it. I just haven't got around to it. It's been a little while. So I'm really excited for this one today. All right, we'll just do this over and over again. Just kind of figure out where you want them and drop them in right there. As many as you want. Now with some white on one side of the filbert brush, I'll just run it right down the right hand side of the tree, just like that. And birch trees, of course, they're a little different. They got this very, very, very bright white bark. So that's what we're painting now. But the shadow side can't just be black. So what we're gonna have to do is throw a little bit of blue and white on the shadow side. <laughs> then we'll have the little, little areas of bark that are chipping off. And that'll be the dark underpainting that we let show through. Now I have an idea. I think I wanna Make this tree all the way down here to the foreground. See, I was just sort of looking at it and just, th just thinking how much more, more of an impact this little tree would have if it was way down here. So maybe, maybe this piece of land comes down like this, and down to about here, and the tree is growing off of that land. Well, it really doesn't matter exactly where it is. We know there's some land down there for, for the tree to grow out of. So we'll bring both of these trees down just like that. And then don't worry about this, we'll sort of kind of erase that little root thing I pulled out. Don't need that anymore. Then thicken it all the way up. Boy, this is really going to give this painting a totally different feel. A lot more impact all the way off the canvas here for both of these trees. But then you treat them just as the little tiny ones do it the same way the highlighting and then leave a little bit of the the dark showing through now i'll tap my fan brush right through some yellow touch of red some white to lighten it up and with that let's just throw on some beautiful loose airy leaves now you can you can vary the colors you're not stuck <laughs> of course you're not stuck to just this one color Look, isn't that pretty? Just enough that it feels like we got some, some beautiful little fall time leaves hanging on. There. Now with a little bit of blue and white, let's just begin to, to work on this waterfall area. You can add a little bit of a little bit of gray into that color, just so it's not so shiny. Now, I don't really want to underpaint this too dark, so let's add a little white here where the falls are going to be. There, 
remember we got a rock. Uh, the rock's gonna be somewhere right in there. Now with our filbert brush, we're just gonna drag back and forth to create a lot of beautiful water movements here. So that brush it right back and then as it comes forward, I'll allow it just to fall right over. And this is gonna create a beautiful little waterfall effect. Now we can go ahead and repeat the process on this side. Maybe there's a little tiny waterfall up here, just like this. And it drifts back right behind the, right behind the trees there. And I don't know, those probably connect up somewhere in that direction. There. Just drag it across and shape your falls. And remember, the more you brush the same area, the softer it'll become. So you have so much freedom here. You get to choose how, how softer or how sharp you want your waterfall. Now we can go ahead and throw some beautiful highlights here on these rocks. Just, just using the filbert brush here and sort of drop them on wherever you think the light would hit. And the light's kind of coming across like this. There. And some of these rocks should be flat. <laughs> Not flat like they have no depth, but flat on top. And some can be rounded. Now with our filbert brush, we'll just add on some beautiful leaves up here to this large tree. I'm really using just some yellow, touch of red in there, and shaping each little individual clump of leaves. All right, <laughs> don't want to cover up the whole sky, so you kind of just look around and, and decide where you want a little clump of leaves and drop them in. Now before we end, there's this little area in here I want to fix. You see these waterfalls when I was looking back, they seem awfully mirrored. So to fix this, what I want to do is just take this rock area and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to erase half of my waterfall here. And I just want to show you that this is what you do when you're painting and something doesn't quite look right. Stand back and usually it's pretty easy to see why and then make the little adjustment. <laughs> Look, it already looks better. See how it's not mirrored anymore? Like two separate and brand new waterfalls. There, we don't want anything symmetrical in our paintings. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.